It's 1934. Aviation pioneer Wiley Post is preparing a record-breaking transcontinental flight across America. Wiley Post was just an adventurer. His career got started as a roughneck in the oil fields of Texas. Second day on the job, he was blinded in one eye by an accident. He took the money he got, compensation, bought an airplane, and just jumped in with aviation with both feet. With two round-the-world flight records to his name, Post is no stranger to danger. But this new challenge will expose him to different risks. To fly faster, Post will need to use high-speed winds found at up to 50,000 feet, where the air is too thin to survive. Up here, without enough atmospheric pressure, nitrogen in his blood will form bubbles, causing the bends. Then there's the lack of oxygen. One possible solution is to carry more air, sealing the cockpit to maintain the right pressure. But that will be too expensive for Post and will add too much weight to get the plane to the right altitude. So the solution for him, very logically, is if you can't pressurize the airplane, pressurize the pilot. Post decides to protect himself inside a suit that will hold the air pressure and the oxygen he needs to survive. He approaches a company that specializes in rubber, called B.F. Goodrich. They task engineer Russell Coley with the job. Russell Coley is a fascinating character in the history of spacesuit development. He had originally wanted to go to fashion school and become a designer for women's dress wares. And somehow his parents convinced him to go to technical school. Coley has a tough challenge. The suit has to do two different jobs, contain air at a higher pressure than its surroundings, and stay flexible. The requirement for flexibility and the pressure are, are contradictory. The tricky part in a pressure suit is being able to move, because you've got to fly the controls. And if you can't do that, you can't fly the airplane. To keep the suit flexible, the pressure inside it will be just one third of that found at sea level but no one knows if the suit will keep him alive. Coley stitches it on his wife's sewing machine. Post's life will depend on the quality of his needlework. Dressed inside it, Post boards his Lockheed Vega aircraft in Los Angeles on March 15, 1935. As he approaches 50,000 feet, he's well into the death zone. But Coley's stitching is holding. When he got the airplane up to altitude and found the jet stream, his average speed was 289 miles an hour. Quite remarkable, because it was significantly faster than the airplane was designed to go. Post covers the first 2,000 miles in just over seven hours and is on track to beat the transcontinental record. But 400 miles short of the New York finish line, he starts to run low on oxygen and is forced to land in Cleveland. Post might not have clinched his speed record, but he's proved that man can survive at 50,000 feet thanks to Coley's pressure suit. Post 